Morning, Chief. What do you mean, good morning? It's half past four in the afternoon. Half past four, is it? Mm. I must have overslept. What, till this time? Well, I didn't get up till after lunch. You know me, Chief. Oh, yes, I know you all right. Now, far be it for me to interfere with your private life, but do you think occasionally, just occasionally, you could look in here? You know, just to see what's on. Yes, yes. Did you offer me a cigarette? No, I didn't, but... Oh, um... You have one? No, thank you. Oh, well, I'll save it for you. You might want it later. Look, Martin, please remember this is a script conference, so don't get sociable on me. Right. What's the picture and when do I start? What do you know about houses? Houses? Why, well, I know people live in them and, um, live in them. Ah, well, that's something anyway. Shows you have a good grasp of the subject. Evidently been listening to the brain's trust. Now, I think there's a story here in these prefabricated houses. Yes. I'm putting you on it because you know absolutely nothing about it. Oh. In this way, you'll be able to start from scratch and see everything like a member of the public. Mm -hmm. Here is a letter of introduction to the iron and steel people. Mm -hmm. They should be able to help you. Yes, it was after the last war that we found that the conventional methods of building houses was making slow progress towards relieving the acute shortage. A departure from normal methods of building was then considered necessary. Pioneer work in the use of steel for housing was undertaken by Lord Weir and the late Duke of Athol and others. Since then, vast strides have been made and the principle of prefabrication has been developed. Of course, the war has helped us tremendously. I mean, now battleships, planes, tanks are all being built by this system. Yes. Tell me, what is prefabrication exactly? Well, of course, a lot of people confuse it with jerry building, but it's very far from the truth. Yes. The only way it differs from the normal house is that the component parts are built in the factory and sent to the site for erection. I see. Whereas the normal house is usually completely built on the site. Well, naturally, you can see all the advantages of prefabrication. The factory is already geared for mass production and able to turn out the parts a lot quicker than those built on the individual sites. Yes, I see. And where does steel come in? Well, that was no accident either. A lot of experiments were carried out, and eventually the pioneers were able to build steel houses for occupation. The first of these houses were built in Scotland after the last war. And during the following three years, more than 2,500 steel houses were built. Others were built for local authorities in England. Since then, ways of making these houses more attractive have presented themselves, and now one's unable to tell the difference between steel and conventional building material. We know that the housing problems after this war will be even more acute than after the last war. Speed must be the keynote. Factory facilities developed during the war will be made available to serve the peace. In England today, a large percentage of the population have no home they can call their own. After five years of war with no repair facilities, the number of slums has increased. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen have married or want to get married. They must have homes to live a normal life again. Evacuated war workers will want to return to homes in their hometown. The land army. Huts must not be for them when we win the peace. These, of course, must get priority. A home in exchange for barbed wire. Finally, the legion who lost their homes in resisting the enemy. We must not fail them. With the inevitable shortage of skilled labor, the prefabricated steel house, both temporary and permanent, will come into its own and do much to alleviate the housing shortage. I think the thought in many minds will be, will the temporary house turn out to be permanent? And will the permanent house last only temporarily? That's a very good point that I'll try to clear up for you. Well, in order to bridge the great gap, these government temporary houses will be built. Licensed only for 10 years, these will be rented at low cost. They are prefabricated, and built of fine steel with a lining of plywood for keeping a good constant heat. After 10 years, they will be scrapped as enough permanent dwellings to house the population will have been built. Although these are only temporary, they will have all the most up-to-date labor-saving devices and all the comfort derived from many years of permanent building construction. The Weir Paragon House has been designed as a permanent home in rural districts for agricultural and mining workers only. 
Plans have been made to build some 20,000 of these houses in the first year after the war. The permanent steel house is meant to last as long as a conventional house. In fact, it should last longer. These will be made in various designs by private enterprise. Now, what do people want in a permanent house? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Good morning, madam. For any forms to fill up, I'm too busy. No forms? No. I just wanted to ask you something. Um, what sort of house would you like after the war? Oh, will it be in the papers? <laughs> well, you never know. Well, I want plenty of hot water. You mean you'd like a bathroom? Well, we do like to wash occasionally. <laughs> of course. But haven't you got a bath here? Oh, yes, we've got a bath. But by the time it's full, it's cold. I see. Uh, well, um, what, tell me, what do you think of these new steel prefabricated houses. Oh, no, I don't want one of them. No? No. Well, have you seen one? No, but, well, it's a new idea, and I don't know as my bird would be keen on new ideas. Even if there's plenty of hot water? Well, if we see it, maybe we believe it. <laughs> Meanwhile, young John here is more interested in the food front. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. Thank you. What sort of a house would you like? A public house. As I shall be spending a lot of time in the kitchen, I want it to be the most up-to-date room in the house. That's a good point. All the labour-saving devices, and above all, easy to clean up after use. What sort of devices? We'll want at least three bedrooms. One for us and one for each of the kids. That's if they're different sex. If not, the extra one can be used as a guest room. You know, where my mother can come and stay. Perhaps to start off with, we'd better have only two bedrooms. And incidentally, I'd like a house with a staircase, and it should have two storeys. Personally, I prefer a bungalow. It's easier to keep clean. But stairs or no stairs, please, we don't want any odd corners with funny steps going up or down into each room, like Mother's old house. She spends half her time cleaning and dusting it. I'd like to live right out in the country. I like to live near the shops and cinemas. I want something different for my neighbours. I'd like a large hall. Clark windows. Large cupboards. Excuse me. I I'm writing a story about houses. Would you like to give me your views? Surely you're interested in post-war houses. I only wanted to ask you a few questions. Przepraszam. Jan nie mówiłem po angielsku. Huh? <laughs> Quiet. Yes, we are ready to switch over from war work to the steel frames of houses as soon as peace comes. In other parts of the country, other factories making different components are ready too. Here today, they're making the framework of bridges. Tomorrow, they'll make the framework of your house. Steel for war becomes steel for the peace. Steel windows, and even steel doors for barracks and temporary war buildings. Tomorrow, these machines will be building your window frames and your doors. Here, steel is given a phosphate coating to prevent rust. It's then painted for the same reason. The life of this steel is now estimated at 40 years. 
This vast area is given over to making screws, but how important they are both in peace and war. Screws for tanks, screws for aircraft, and now steel screws for housing. Steel walls for tanks. Steel walls for invasion barges. Tomorrow, the steel walls of your house. Hubs for vehicles, hubs for war transport. And soon these hubs change to connecting brackets. And don't forget steel roofing. These flat pieces of steel are placed in the machine which automatically gives it a coating of bitumen and a coating of felt. This gives the steel a tremendous span of life as well as insulation. You've probably wondered how they corrugate steel. Well, this is the machine that does it. Each factory will then dispatch the different parts to the building site. That's splendid. Well, thank you very much, sir. Oh, uh, incidentally, mm -hmm. these houses are a big saving on transport. Now, here's a photo of two of these houses being dispatched on one lorry. Mm, that's very interesting. You know, I'd like to see one of these for myself. Well, why not go to the experimental site and see the first of these permanent houses? Why, yes, I'd like to. And take your girlfriend, too. She may offer some advice. <laughs> About all she has offered me. Can I? <laughs> Certainly, go ahead. I want to put a call through to London, please. Hello? Yes, this is Jean. No, I don't want to buy a house. Oh, see a house. Darling, is this a proposal? No, darling, this isn't a proposal. But if you can manage to be out of that bed by nine o'clock tomorrow morning, meet me at the back. Well, there it is. Well, it looks like a normal house. I expected to see something fantastic, like in things to come. <laughs> yes, they all think that. A woman came along last week to look at the various houses, and I asked her which one she'd like. Oh, she said, I don't mind, but I wouldn't like a steel house. But I would like that one, though. And she pointed to the steel house. How long did they take to build? Oh, you should have been here three weeks ago when we started. Of course, all the parts had previously been delivered to the site, and the foundations had been laid. The framework took 13 hours to put up. This experiment was carried out in very bad weather. But as soon as the framework is complete, the roof can go on which enables the walls and everything else to be erected under cover. With these houses, an important feature is that they can be lined with any kind of insulating material according to the requirements of the climate. In this case, these blocks provide insulation for the walls, while the roof is insulated by fiberboard. This not only ensures a warm house in winter and a cool one in summer, but above all, this same insulation also provides completely adequate soundproofing. This, of course, is only an experimental house, but with mass production, we could turn them out in two weeks. And later on, with more experience, we'll put them up even quicker. Can they make them in different designs? Oh, yes. Over there, they're working on another type of steel house. So, you see, the steel industry's contribution to post-war housing should be pretty formidable and should help tremendously in solving the vast problem of post-war housing. Afternoon, Chief. What do you mean, good afternoon? It's only 11 o'clock in the morning. Ah, you haven't been up since 4 a.m. It's afternoon to me. Incidentally, I've read your script. Oh. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. Who wrote it for you? Well, uh... <laughs> no, seriously, Chief. I'm really interested in this subject. It looks like being a tremendous job. Mr. Churchill says we'll need four million houses in ten years. Four million? And I think they'll win their race against time.